Hello and welcome back to the Football Terrace. We're here live in Doha. It's been a fantastic World Cup, but we want to know from you who have been your best performers, the flops of the tournament, and your best moments. I'm joined here in the studio by the brilliant Jessica Back and man like KJ. Good afternoon. How are you both doing? Am I not brilliant? Like Jessica's brilliant. I get man like just 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 man like. Where's my superlative, my my mother? Um, I have to be nice to this lady for multiple reasons. That is very true. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, how are you both doing? You good? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, I man. can't complain. Yeah, we're almost almost at the home stretch. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be a great day today. I can feel it. It is, it is. But we're here to have a little bit of a chat and talk with you and, of course, with the audience at home as well about the best player and the biggest flop of this tournament. Best player or best team or biggest flop, that can be a player or a team, whatever you want it to be. So what should we start with? The best or the flops? What do you want to go first? It's bad news first. Yeah, bad news yeah, first. Yeah, start with the flops, Get man. the bad food. Get them okay, cool. I'm going to go with you first then, Jess. Who, in your opinion, has been the biggest flop at the FIFA 2022 World Cup? Yeah, it was hard for me to think of an individual player uh, because there's there's some really obvious ones that I'm sure that you guys will talk about. But I actually went with Spain um, as a as a team um, has an idea. <laughs> um, there was a huge hype job around Spain after the the first couple of group stage matches. They looked like they were playing the best football. I know I felt like I was watching them play the best football. Pedri and Gavi being you know the next Iniesta and Xavi. Um, Busquets back to his old, look at this, look at this, uh, Rodri in the back, Luis Enrique, Galaxy Brain, made it, made it work. For them to go out of the tournament so early mm. after that hype job, it was, it was horrible. Like, it's terrible. And I just feel like, again, Spain, they do a lot of passing and a lot of pretty stuff, but they don't really get the job done. Where there's teams that are left over in this competition that people are like, oh, they're not really playing that well. Well, in tournament football, it's all about getting the results. It's about getting through the different, it's not really about how well you play. Mm -hmm. And I think that they've kind of put us through like this, this rouge or whatever. This is not Barcelona, this is international football. And we need you to win the games, you know? What makes them in your opinion, Jess, a bigger flop than say Germany that crashed out horrendously? Because I think there was, our, there was a feeling in the back of a lot of our minds that Germany were not going to be good. Like I don't know anybody who thought Germany were gonna be any good. There's none of, none of their players, except for um, Muzalia, like, because he's new and fresh and he's like a vibe now, so it's like people were talking about him, but the hype around Pedri yeah. and mm -hmm. Gavi in particular was very much so pushing this hype train, and I think that's why you have Luis Enrique, somebody who people regard as one of the best international managers out, out there, and Hansi Flick is just kind of getting his feet wet. Mm -hmm. So I do think that both of them were really, really disappointing, but it's because of the hype that went from that first group game through the last group game. I think that's where it really came in. I'll get you on that. Uh, yeah, I, I, think, I think you're right to say Spain. I agree. But I personally would put more the blame on Enrique oh. than the Spain as a collective because he's the one who chose the squad that he had. I don't know, he's only limited to Spanish players, obviously, but... <laughs> but like, you're not limited you, to Barcelona players, right? You, you could have brought Sergio brought, Ramos. Yeah, you could have brought um, Gerard Moreno. So you could have brought other players who could do the job that's needed to be done in tournament football. Also, leaving Morata off in the, semi, uh, in, in the round of 16 game when you need goals in your team, that, that's down to him. And yeah. there are so many things that went wrong for Spain as the tournament went on. The group of players did, they actually did the job that you wanted them to. They kept the ball, they kept it moving, they did all that. So you can't say this particular player played poorly. That, they did the job that was asked for them, and what was asked for them was not good enough to, to, mm. to get far in the tournament. And I have I to agree. put that on Enrique. Yeah, I agree. I, I get that. Obviously, viewers are going to have their opinions, but KJ, who's your biggest flop of this World Cup? So obviously, we did our morning show and we said a few. And the one I forgot to mention, the one I actually looked back at, and I think he's the massive flop, is the man that actually hates international football, yet he's here. Yet he came to the World Cup, Kevin De Bruyne. Kevin De Bruyne is the biggest flop this tournament because how can you come to this World Cup and basically don't want to be here? Not be asked, saying things in the, in, in the press conferences, calling them too old, saying they can't win it, basically inciting rebellion with inside the, uh, the Belgium camp mm -hmm. to, to create an official, create a divide, it stemmed, it stemmed from him, and you saw it on the pitch. He was lethargic. He, 
His passes were unreaching. His touches were poor. He wasn't the same. He just wasn't the same threat. And yes, we can all laugh at Lukaku in that um, in that last game when he's missed all his chances. But normally, the guy for Belgium is Kevin De Bruyne. But yeah, it was nowhere to be seen. Old man Hazard was trying his best, but he's finished. Lukaku doing Lukaku things. He's the guy that was supposed to get them through. But alas. He was nowhere to be seen. You He's know, there moaning and complaining. You know what I think is like, this is what separates like the best of the best to the players that are just really, really good. No offense, like Kevin De Bruyne is a world-class midfielder in the Premier League, but we can't say that he's the best in the world because we're not seeing it throughout everything that he does. Sometimes in Champions League, we're like, is he there, is he not? And then on the international stage, is he there, is he not? Whereas you look at somebody like Luka Modric, he does it for his club team in, in the league, for in the Champions League, and on the world stage, with, with no, no matter what's going on. And just like even expanding it just a little bit more, this golden generation that we talked about, we should have been hyping up Croatia's golden generation because that was mm. way better than mm. the Belgium one. This, it's just been a total yeah, flop. Imagine, You're totally right. Imagine, imagine, Modric coming out and saying Croatia's too old to do what they did. And he's, granted, he's an old man himself, so he's got no right to say that. But the, the morale would not be the same. And they do not, Croatia don't get where they get to without the mentality of Luka Modric. That is the difference between the two. I think it's a great shout. And I want to pull on what you, you said there, Jess. KDB is brilliant. And he's one of the best Premier League midfielders of all time. I'm not taking that away from him. But is he protected slightly? And I've seen this going around on social, so it's a question. Is he protected by the Pep Guardiola system? Which is phenomenal. We, I, I think it protects a number of players that play within it. Now, he's an integral part and he helps keep it ticking over. But you take KDB out of it and he's never as good. Or you put him up against teams and systems that are equally as good and nullifies him slightly. So there is a question there to be asked. But I think more of this is the mentality, as you say. I think going into it and not really wanting to be there, slagging off his teammates that are too old. That, for me, is awful. Personally, if you're the part of the Belgium Football Association, I'm not too sure what they're called, the Belgium FA, let's yeah. just call them that, he, they should think about never picking him again because what he did should be treated with, with a serious level of discipline. Because treason. It's, it's, it's tre <laughs> treason. Treason, my brother. Treason. <laughs> uh, don't let him back in the country. But, yeah, look, for me, uh, yeah, what he did was disgraceful. Yeah. My pick, though, there's a few that you could go to. I was thinking Rafinha, it was Ooh. awful. Oh, like he did a lot of dribbling, a lot of skills and tricks, but in every game, it was never him that was the difference. Richarlison, Casemiro, Neymar, uh, Vinny Jr. He was just kind of there, but didn't do nothing. Do you know what I mean? He was there for the party, but, but didn't bring a bottle. Brazil themselves, you could argue they flopped. Yeah. They were winning a game, they should have gone through, they man, didn't. Man did all the dancing, Tite doing all... You know, it's, yeah, uh, I think those, yeah, like, those things play into it. We've mentioned Germany as an example. I don't think Son had a particularly good competition. I thought he, I thought he was average at best. But I'm going to have to stick with my guns and go with Cristiano Ronaldo. Because it, Cristiano Ronaldo performed how I thought. So he's not a flop to me, because I think he's past his best. But he's a flop for how all his fanboys, with his chief cheerleader, Piers Morgan, bigged him up to be. It was essentially... Get him away from Ten Hag. Get him away from the toxicity of the, the English press and Manchester United. And we're going to see the very best Cristiano Ronaldo in the world. <laughs> we, we didn't. We didn't. Yeah. And for me, based on the, uh, he'll do it, he'll deliver, he'll stand up. And I really wanted him to. When Messi got that first knockout guard, wow, well, ah, Ronaldo's going to come back and he's going to deliver something. He was dropped. He came on after being dropped. Made almost no impact. Had a good chance. Missed it. So I feel a bit, personally, I would pick Kevin De Bruyne over him, but that was your yeah, choice. Yeah. I think Spain are bigger choices over him, but he's in the top five flops of the well, World the, Cup for me. The, the thing about Ronaldo is, like, he has to start to read the room. Mm -hmm. Look around. When everybody tells you to lie down, like, you're dead. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, he's just one of those, he's, like, he's not getting it. Every time he exits, everything around him gets better. Do you know what I mean? He's almost like the Grim Reaper around here. <laughs> like, I'm serious. Like, the moment they took him out of the Portugal side, they just sprung to life. And of mm. course, like, they didn't do well moving on to the tournament, but they were much better mm. without him stinking up the joint. And yeah. so it's just time to read the room. Like, you're no longer yeah. that guy. And yeah. I think he's yeah. having a really hard time coming to grips with that. Yeah, the one moment I think that epitomizes what Ronaldo has become right now in this moment, in the last couple of months, is trying to claim that goal. 
yeah. trying to claim that goal, like, yes. like so hard, like the, the the tip of his hair touched his own foot. Like, it's my goal, like, like it's been, it was factually proven, scientifically proven that he didn't yeah. touch it, but yet he's still fighting, and his fanboys are still it fighting. It was cringe. But it's re it's well, really sad to see him go out like that. It, it certainly is. Viewers, who is your flop of the tournament? Please let us know in the comments sections now. Now, on a more positive note, yeah. KJ, I'm going to come to you first. Here we go. Who's been your player of the tournament? Oh, it is. Ah, it's been a wonderful tournament. I think there's been many great performances. Um, you look at Amrabat from, from Morocco, Luka Modric for Croatia. But I, it'll be wrong of me to not pick a player from the, the teams in the final, personally, because they got there all the way. And from this point onwards, it doesn't matter what happens, I think the player of the tournament can be the player of the tournament. Unless something mad happens in the final. But I'm going with uh, Lionel Messi. Uh, I think Messi for Argentina has been the driving force. He has been around in every single game with a goal, with an assist, with a piece of play that like, helps the team get over the line. And yes, we, we can ignore the... I think we can ignore um, Saudi Arabia because he even scored in that game, you know what I mean? And he was creating chances for his teammates, but they just don't know how to be on side. So Lionel Messi, in every game, I believe, has delivered something. And most of the games, it was beautiful, brilliant, and decisive. And he can get another... Well, has he got a golden ball already for, in uh, the World Cup? Okay. If he's not had the best player at the World Cup before, he deserves it right now. The one thing about Messi that's so different from, like... Like, let's look at, like, we just spoke about Cristiano Ronaldo, is that every single player on that team is playing for him. Mm. They're playing for Argentina, but they're really playing for him. And I think that, that shows, like, how much they, they love him and respect him and respect what he gives to them. Like, they could just look at him as just, like, a superstar, keeping them from being able to shine and all this kind of stuff. But they freaking love this guy. Like, they love him so much. And you see them really just pushing forward. And that's what makes Messi so great and Argentina so great. They're all working together for a common cause. Like, win the World Cup, but win it for Messi. That's so powerful. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen that before. No, I haven't either. And I, I love it because it shows... Because they, they know what comes with him winning the World Cup. Mm -hmm. What comes with him lifting that trophy is he's already got a, level, a huge level of Im immortality in the sport, but he completes the set with everything else he's done. And I think it almost, if you're an Argentinian, you may not agree that Messi's the GOAT. You may say it's Maradona, but imagine having number one and number two <laughs> in no particular order. That's what you should want. Yeah. That's what kind of annoys yeah. me sometimes about certain England fans is, they would rather see an international player be named the best player in the world over an English player if that English player plays for a rival Premier League team. It's really beautiful to see a nation that just want their player, no matter who they play for. The fact that Messi's spent none of his professional career in Argentina, they want their man, their guy to be seen as the pinnacle. And it's a beautiful thing. Who's your pick? Jay, what are you going with? I'm going for Anton Griezmann. How to reinvent yourself 101, mm -hmm. you know, as a player. As you get older, sometimes you have to play different roles to, in order to stay, for the lack of a better word, relevant. And I think that Griezmann went from playing like a winger role to playing like a second striker. And then now he's playing in a, like a deeper kind of like number eight role. And every single World Cup that rolls around, he's doing something a little bit different. But he's, he's very important to what France are trying to do. Have France played the best, most beautiful football possible? No, but when he needed them, to, uh, when he was needed to make tackles, you know, to make interceptions, to you know, starting attacks, he's done it all. And I think he's quietly been just behind, obviously, Mbappe, their mm -hmm. best player. And the reason why I didn't choose Mbappe was just because Griezmann is just like an insane player. He played club football. He doesn't really get a lot of plaudits because of where he's been, and then the Barcelona move. But to come into the international fold and always be so important to the team and not to be a striker yeah. and to just kind of fill in where you need to be, that's like exactly what footballers should be looking to do to extend their careers a lot longer. So Griezmann's been phenomenal to watch. And like, I can't wait to see what he is next, next World Cup. He could be a right back <laughs> for all we know. Do you know what I mean? Because he's so good. I think what you've said is so spot on. The best players in the world can adapt and change positions. When they're, you know, whether it's because someone better is now in their role or whether it's father time and it's age, the adaptation. It's why for me Messi's been the best player because he's now playing a different role to that of 
two, three, four years ago himself, and he has delivered in every single game. But so has Griezmann. Griezmann has been better than Kylian Mbappe at this World Cup. The difference is Mbappe is more popular. And what we tend to know in the last 10 to 15 years, 20 years maybe, when it comes to these personal awards, best players, PFA Player of the Year, quite often the Ballon d'Or, it is a popularity contest. And you'll see when the best players in the world emerge over the next three to four years, when the Messi and Ronaldo retire, the ones with the biggest social media following will always be in the conversation because the organisations running the award want their reach, they want their grab because the sponsors literally pay for that. It's all a popularity contest. And that's why for me, Griezmann, to, to people whose football palette is a little bit bland, you know, they don't season it, they won't, they won't appreciate Antoine Griezmann. They, they'll see it as basic. That, well, what, what's he done? Where's the flair? Where's the great bit of skill? Where's the, where's the, where's the, little, the, the, where's the movement? Or where is the, 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 the clip that will be played in 20, 30 years' time? You could argue that. You might be able to find it. But it's the consistency that you've pointed out, which has been sensational. So the reason I picked Messi over him is because Messi's done that, but delivered those standout moments. Yeah. With Antoine Griezmann, though, I think if he had got injured and not Karim Benzema, France wouldn't be where they are. Mm. You know, Mbappe's had a few games in the knockout stages where he was... England silenced him. He didn't do very much in the semi-final until right near the end, a very good bit of skill for the second goal. Griezmann, though, he's been fantastic from first whistle until the last whistle thus far and I think it's a, a, a phenomenal phenomenal shout viewers who would you pick as your player of the tournament let us know in the comments sections now make sure like buttons are being smashed and that you're subscribing to the terrace final question for you both I'm going to go to you first Jess of course you've been here for the entire month mm. you've basically moved here um, for that time but what has been for you it can be any element of the world cup what has been the most special part for you uh, I would say the most special part for me is probably just Morocco. The fans, their journey, the vibe, everything. Like, you have to have an underdog story somewhere in there. And I wasn't sure where it would come from. I wasn't sure what team would be able to, to kind of like inch their way through it. And I think that not only were they an underdog story because of nobody really thought that they would get where they where they where they got to, which is the semifinals, but they made history by becoming the first African nation to ever reach the semifinals, and they played good freaking ball. They played mm. good ball, and I think players like Amrabat and Awani, and even players that they have that are playing like in their respective leagues, like that are not like top five leagues, made a name for themselves, and they played out of their skin. And I think. That's exactly what you want to see for the World Cup because you want to see the best players, the, the Messi's and the Mbappe's really show out and get to the final, but you always want to have that underdog story. And I think they've been a really good one in this tournament, and so mm -hmm. they've been the highlight for me. Especially their fans are just absolutely phenomenal and so sweet and so nice and just want to be a part mm -hmm. of the party. Yeah. And that, you love that, right? You love that for them. So it's been Morocco, you know, that's it. <laughs> Yeah, Morocco is a, a, a great shout for, for the moment. I'm going to pick another team. I'm going to pick Japan. Japan yeah. were amazing. The way that they played with so much energy, vibrancy, like, and even the fact that their manager probably had two moments of tactical masterclass against Japan and uh, not just Japan, against Germany and Spain. Yeah. Like, the fact that all of that came together and they were the, the PMP without the P, you know what I mean? They were so, the energy was amazing to see. Yeah. And, and, and a, a group of players that you would always question, ah, oh, what do they, like, what are they good at? Like, well, can, can they run fast? Can they pass forward? That they could do all of that and then some. Some of the goals they scored were, were amazing. And yeah, they really put Asian football, again, you talk about African football getting propped up yeah. this tournament by Morocco. Uh, Asian football really got propped up by Japan and I'm excited to see because their team was young as well it wasn't mm -hmm. like a bunch of older veterans it's a, you know, quite a few young players coming through I'm excited to see uh, what's next for yeah. Japan in the next World Cup I think both those shouts are, are, are great um, I, sp I spoke about this earlier today that you know, as an Englishman watching England have one of our best ever performances in a knockout game against Senegal was great the amount of goals we scored was brilliant to see of course, Japan's wins, you've mentioned the celebrations of the Moroccans was great. Watching Messi do what he's been doing, maybe for the last ever time. Luka Modric balling out. I think all these things were great. I think something that was stand out for me, though, was actually we very late in the day, KJ and I had the privilege of coming over here. 
just the general atmosphere being here in Doha has been so different to how a lot of people on television were portraying it in the yeah. UK massively, you know, and just the locals talking to you, the vibe. As a content creator, the openness to filming and interviewing people in England, if you pull a phone out or a camera anywhere and you're trying to make football content, there's always people sometimes literally wanting to hurt you just for talking about football. It's kind of crazy when you think about it. We're here, it's been so welcoming and opening and, and, and everything else. Uh, the behaviour of the majority of fans has been sensational. You yeah. told me this stat yesterday. It's the first World Cup in modern history where not a single Englishman has been arrested. <laughs> and, and for me, we know why that is, because alcohol wasn't here. And, and I actually, uh, I'm someone who likes a little drink. But I've actually enjoyed the fact that at this World Cup, that hasn't been a part of it. And there's an element to that that's kind of been quite eye-opening. So I think for me, seeing an, another part of the world for the first time, obviously we've met a lot of locals where we're yeah. living out by Alfie Mama, that for me has been really special. The way they've welcomed everybody, the vibe has just been... like This is an international football tournament with multiple countries here. There hasn't been animosity. All the fans have mixed together. There's been no problems. And that is testament to the way it has been run and the kind of relaxed nature that they have taken, but kind of relaxed with, with a good amount of authority next to it. It's almost, yeah. you know, you don't overstep the mark, but if you don't overstep the mark, you can have as much fun as you want. So for me, the actual feeling and the mood here has just been sensational. And um, yeah, very, very happy to have been able to take part in that as well. So I think that the football moments have been great, but actually being here and experiencing the tournament has been, has been out of this world. Yeah, a yeah. once in a lifetime opportunity, I think. Yeah, and, and on to the next one, hopefully. You know I mean? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So that's, that's the USA, uh, Mexico and Canada, uh, next World Cup. So uh, that'll, be, that'll be different. It won't, it won't be as calm. No. It won't be as you calm. You definitely can't, won't be able to take a 40-minute Uber for £4.20. Like that, no, no, yeah. that's, that's not going to happen. Uh, the price of things here is, is, is very respectable as well. But um, listen, viewers, we want to know what your favourite moments of the FIFA 2022 World Cup has been. It's been a fantastic tournament to be part of. We've enjoyed calling most games and give you daily updates each day. Jess, KJ, always a pleasure to share the screen with you. Big thank you to everyone in the room that's made it possible, the cameramen, the technicians and everybody else, the director in my ear. Thank you very much. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless and we'll see you all again soon. Thank you.